Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com. This video is a video overview of a game title menu screen I've created using the game creation tool Construct 2. I'm releasing the CapEx file for free and you can download it from my website. A link to this can be found in the bottom of the screen. Um, just to give you a brief overview as to why I'm doing this, a while back on my previous website EnglishAcon.com forward slash press, I created a list of items I wanted to create in Construct 2 and allow people to download them just to help them to learn the software. Um, if you go that's quite a comprehensive list however due to lack of time I had to stop it prematurely. So this video is just to continue with that. Um, for the title menu screen I had wanted originally to do three different types of simple menu screen which I have done and you can find at the skewer.com um, forum and arcade and the other ones are a more complex one and then a very complex one but I've kind, kind of bundled those two in together just to get them out of the way and so I've created this which is sort of a semi-complex game title screen. Um, each element as you can see there's a small animation which you can use and you can then change for yourself depending on what your game would like to be. But they all link to something like for example these social buttons they, they go to different websites um, whereas these buttons here well the top two would go to a different layout which is the current layout that, that they're on which is why they're going back to the main screen. So like I said you can find a download link for the CapEx file for this in the video description. I thought I'd just explain when writing this uh, I was considering what are the most common elements found in a game title menu screen um, and this picture is illustrates. You de generally tend to have the game title which is pictured at the top and then a menu of selectable items such as new game, continue, options or instructions you generally would find the social button somewhere out there because you want to increase the views your game gets and the publicity so having these linking to your social network um, is very valuable. You'd also have a sponsor. If your game is sponsored by anybody you'd normally be asked to place a sponsor on, on your game or when it loads up. You'd also want to have a credit line just to give credit to the artists, the programmers and whoever's made the game um, to give them some recognition. Going over to the CapEx file now, um, when you download it and open it you should come to this screen um, and I'll just explain some of the elements here. Normally on the CapEx files which allow people to download I have a little information just linking back to the site where they downloaded it from. But you ignore these, um, I've, I've named them just advertisements 1, 2, 3 and 4 I think. Just ignore those, uh, the main things you want to focus on are these. Um, the elements I've included here are two social icon sprites, Twitter or Tumblr, you can change those, um, as well as another icon, I've named these icons just to keep them together, called Sponsor. I then have text, if you look at the um, reference I put when I'm typing in, <coughs> for each text object I normally put a text. For each object I include in my game, I normally have a prefix, so for example with text, I'll have text before it. Uh, with these icons, I've got icons. Um, for this, I've included four different menu items, however for these I've got the prefix menu just to keep them together. Uh, in the background there are two red side elements and then there are two of these tiled backgrounds or dashed lines which move up and down. There's the title menu which is the sprite by itself. So just look around those um, just to get familiarise yourself with them. Concerning the layers, I've got a fade in layer, so if you were to go back to the game, um, you see that the game fades in when you get to the menu. If you look at another tutorial I've released, um, or will be releasing, it'll explain how to create fade transi transitions as well as other transitions into your different layouts. Um, the different layers I've got the background, which is the main background, background detail, I've just called it for these move moving um, background scrollers. Um, I've then got the social icons, the credit line, sponsor, game menu, um, and game title all in different layers just to help with programming. Um, within this example, there are two families as one the menu items, which are these here, um, all placed into the family, and the other one's icons um, just to help with. Um, reducing the time it takes to create this. If you go over to the title menu event sheet you can see everything laid out for you. Um, I've grouped all the um, glo <coughs> global var variables at the top. I haven't um, 
commented them and described them all, but they're mo most of them are quite um, obvious. I tend to put comments around here just to help you to understand what each, each bit does. And I'll just go through these. So the first two global variables, which are BD scroll and detail scroll, they just dictate the speed at which the background scrolls. So if you look at the example, you, you notice that the background is moving. So these are just dictating the speed at which those are moving. Um, detail scroll is minus two, which means it's going in a different direction from the top one, just uh, the other background. Um, as in this, we have the properties, um, start properties and end properties of the text menu. If you look at the example again, you notice that I've used text items and that they change when you scroll over them. Um, they change the size and they actually change the font. Uh, so I've included these global variables to help with the initial size and font of the text and then the font once the mouse has moved over them. Uh, this isn't normally how I'd lay out my own um, layout, but it's roughly the same. I tend to group things and when I create the group I put the, the, the title of the layout first so that other groups and other layouts, event sheets, don't, don't get mixed up with these. Um, and I then give a, a brief explanation of what they do and I tend to keep all my coding within groups just to help me to identify different things quickly if I need to go and edit anything. So within the fade in group you'll see that it's this is just the coding used to fade in the menu and basically it's very simple. If you go back to layers, um, go to the top layer, I've created a layer called fade in, I've placed it at the very top, I've coloured it black here on the left, I then made it transparent, no, but I've turned the opacity down to zero. If the opacity was 100 then it would be black, but I'm turning it to zero. And basically this is what your fade in is, it's a black layout which slowly becomes uh, more transparent until it's perfectly clear. Um, so if you go back to the event sheet, that's what this this code does. It controls how that layer um, becomes more transparent. The next group is background, and this controls the positioning of the moving elements in the background, or at least the two lines. Um, there's two lots of those lines which move together, this and that. So this controls this. Basically, it creates because because these um are tile backgrounds you can increase the size and the pattern repeats and what this event does or these events do is they change the height of this to be the height of the layout and then a little bit more uh, which is 256 pixels which is the size of the actual image um, they then position it at this size um, I think I've got it, where, have I, where do I have it? Um, they position it uh, the, the size negative y and then each time period they move this down and when it gets to a certain point it then repositions back to where it was and that gives the illusion of a moving background. You can't see it so well with um, the white lines although they seem to be flashing but it's the same sort of thing and the same thing is going on with the red um, squares as well as they move. Going back to this, um, the next group is the scrollers which are just the red moving background, the red squares that should move up. Again they're um, uh, tile backgrounds and so they can be as long as they want. You can change the size and the pattern repeats and I've only got it repeating down, I mean a repeat to the side but obviously I don't want that. Um, and that's the same thing, it's placing the item above the layout, setting its height to the layout height plus the um, size of the picture which is 64 in this case, so it'll be 64 pixels above, then each sec um, each time period it moves down so many pixels and then when it gets to um, 64 pixels or its own size pixels difference get, then gets reset back up and continues and it gives the illusion of it moving constantly. I have produced another tutorial and example of this in um, see that in a different video about how to do these background scrollers uh, and I should point out if you are to do these try and use move um, instead, of, instead of changing their x value or the y value use move at an angle and then the distance include delta time times 60 which you couldn't have one um, <coughs> sorry one delta time is a reference to the speed of the engine rather than the frames that it generates which means that although you might lose frames per second during the 
gameplay, you're not losing your time as you uh, that the engine actually runs up. Sorry, I've got a cold, so it might sound a bit stuffy today. Um, if you if you just go through these, it's normally pretty self-explanatory. Um, start of layout, I create, change their size, then I set them at a certain position, and then I move them to the layer. Then every second they move at a certain angle, um, and then the second one moves at the same speed as the first one. And then when they get to a certain y coordinates, then they reset. So it's quite simple, straightforward. Go into the next group, which is title menu. Uh, Let's see this title game. This just sets out the layout. Sorry, this sets out the position on the layout of the game title and also moves it to the layer game title. I tend to have these definite, definitive sort of um, actions. Uh, I could just go here and select the layer, which it already is. It already is, but I tend to have these just because of my experience from earlier versions of Construct 2. Sometimes <laughs> things go wrong. And so perhaps there's a little bit of insecurity there with that. Um, the credit line, the credit line is found at the bottom, which is basically this text item here. Now, if, if you go to this part of the event sheet, you see that at the start of layout, I put the position and layer that was on. I then set it so that if the cursor is over the text, that it changes the opacity to 60, and that sets the mouse cursor hand, sorry, cursor to, to a hand, sort of as you can see there. That sort of. Um, example, and I'll just zoom in so you can see that. Well, I do need to zoom in as you, as you can see that when I go over the credit line, it um, changes the cursor from a pointer to a hand. So that's basically what that is. Oops. Going back to this, I also get it to trigger once because you need to get it uh, and play a sound. If I didn't have trigger once and play a sound, it constantly play a sound while the cursor's over the credits and it make like a sort of sound. So I get it to trigger once while true. Um, and if the cursor is not, the mouse is not over the text item, then it resets the text opacity to 100. And if the mouse clicks on the credit line, then it, I'm using the object uh, browser and it goes to the web address that I've selected here. Um, if you are running your game and through an iframe and hosting on a different website, you may have to have this web link here go to another page in your site that you're hosting the game at, and then that's page then forwards the user on somewhere else, um, an HTML redirect link, uh, just because sometimes I've experienced in the past that the browser only opens up in the iframe itself, um, and as a result you're, the, the user is still looking for, through the iframe of the next website, which uh, is not always helpful. At the moment this is open a new window, so it may get around it, but uh, again it's just experience I've had in the past. Um, social icons. Start of layout, they just set the position and the layer for each of these. Um, title menu sponsor, again, this is just setting the layout and position for these. And then menu items, so these are the um, new game, continue options, and instructions. If you, read through, if you read through the events, if you read through the events, it just explains it. You know, it set, starts menu items, sets their width, um, sets their x value to layout width and a half, so that's the middle of the page and menu item. If you notice, oh, you can't, can't see it perhaps, but if you zoom in, you'll notice that these icons have a red sort of square in the top right hand corner. That means that they're actually a family group. Um, this is a bit awkward. The fam my family group is called menu items, plural with an S. However, there is an item which is this very top of new game called menu items. So don't be too confused here. They're two different things. So I've set the menu items to the, this width and to this position. I've then set the first uh, menu item, which is new game, to Y to position 170. Um, then every second I set the next menu item, which is menu item 2, to the position of menu item plus a certain height. I then set, so this continues set to the same height as menu item 1 and then plus an additional amount. Um, and then the next one, menu item 3, is done, done to the same but to the menu item two and so on and so forth. Oh, um, I've got those the wrong way around so um, it, it looked more like this actually. And options and instructions I think. Is that correct? Options and instructions, yeah. So just be careful of that. Just just look at the number. Um, going down and then for each of these family groups called menu items, if the cursor is over them, um, then set this 
uh, set of uh, values to that family group item um, and then trigger once this audio and set the mouse cursor to this. However, if for each, each item, if the cursor is not over that item, set it to these um, set of values and those refer to the global variables I had set at the top. And so all you need to do is change these if you want to change the look rather than having to go in and change the code. Um, the next group is icons and that's very similar for each icon. If the mouse cursor is over it, trigger once to play the audio, but also if the mouse cursor is over it, change opacity. For each item, if the mouse cursor is not over it, don't set the opacity. You'll find if you don't include this for each icon, um, the computer doesn't check for each icon if these events are true. It'll do it generally. So for example, if I didn't have for each icon and my mouse cursor was over the, this icon and now I quickly moved the mouse cursor over to the next icon um, and it, it wouldn't it would still register them as being on an icon so both of them would actually be faded uh, with their PC set to 60 because they're still on an icon as a, um, it's quite hard to explain you might need to play around with that just to see what I'm trying to get at here uh, and then the next section if they, these items are clipped go to this website etc etc as mentioned before um, and finally this last group type menu reset mouse pointer um, if the mouse pointer cursor is not over an icon or one of these set it back to normal because you'll notice that when you go over these mouse cursor is set to pointer oops mouse cursor is set to pointer um, so you need something to reset it back to sorry the mouse cursor is set to a hand so you need something to set it back to a pointer when you're off it uh, so that's basically what that does um, menu items I didn't explain um, here at the bottom, uh, it it says mouse pointer. If you click on this menu item, the family group, it checks a, va a variable. If you look on the left here, instant variable. Each of the menu items have these. They have um, a link destination, and they have a link um, type. It says if it's link zero, go to this layout. So, for example, new game has a link type zero and continue has a new game, uh, link type zero and they have a destination of title menu so it says go to this layout menu items variable link destination which is this text here and it refer to the layout name so which is title menu so um, to explain what that, that does if I click on new game it's going to go to the layout which has the same name as the variable called um, layout so it's going to go to the state it's going to go to the game title layer which is this one it's currently on which is why it keeps in sort of resetting itself when you click on these two um, so just to follow that through so new game look on the left the link destination is title menu if you click on it if you click on it and the link type is zero which it is then go to the menu items variable link destination which is title menu okay but if the link is is um, one then you go to the link destination again um, but if it's titled to one, I've already changed these to a HTML, um, sorry, to a web address. So it'll go to that web address. So that's just to explain that. So that should cover all of that. So if you have any questions, just ask. I hope I've been quite thorough in explaining different aspects of it. I'm sorry I can't go through program each bit at a time. That's due to a one, not having enough time, and two, technical difficulties, uh, especially with sound um, and other things as well. Uh, if you like these tutorials, please subscribe to this channel, please visit my website EnglishAken.com and please visit my other website which I'm trying to develop at the moment which is C2Ezine.com which is an unofficial Construct 2 related online magazine. Um, it's still in its early days so while I get time I'm trying to put things up onto their articles, reviews and, and such. At the moment I'll just have the download so the download for this CapEx file should be on there as well as bringing over the other CapEx files which you can download onto that side. Um, you need to register as a member to download these um, and once you do please ask, uh, go into the forum talk, whatever, ask questions about all the different CapsX files if you need to. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.